Hey everyone, Dr. Clearfield here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about concussions. And so a lot of people know a little bit about concussions, but they don't totally understand what's kind of going on with it. And so I'm hoping that this video is able to help clarify that a little bit better for you. So many of us have rolled our ankle and maybe we rolled our ankle and it didn't swell up on us, but sure enough, it's sprained. And so if we try to run on it, we try to cut, it kind of hurts and it tells our body, you know what, I can't do this right now. A concussion is very similar to this. It's like a brain sprain, a sprain of the brain. And so if we do imaging, if we do a CAT scan, we do an MRI, structurally, everything looks fine on that. And so, but at the same time, functionally, the brain is not working the right way. In general, our brain is an organ that takes up more blood flow than any other organ in our body. So when we exercise, when we think really hard, we get that blood really flowing. And the reason our head doesn't explode is because our brain is able to regulate that blood pressure in there, what's called cerebral autoregulation. Sometimes after a concussion injury, we have difficulty with that autoregulation. And so if we think really hard, if we exercise, that increased pressure in our brain starts manifesting as things such as headaches, as far as dizziness, as far as nausea, as far as difficulty with concentrating, sensitivity to bright lights and noises, all these kind of cardinal symptoms that we see with concussion injuries. And so the other analogy that I like to talk about with a concussion is if we think about our brain as several different roads that we need to be able to drive down every single day to get to our destination. When we have a concussion, all of a sudden some of these common roads that we go down are under construction and so that we have to take a detour to be able to get to our destination. So nobody likes a detour. You don't know exactly where you are. You're, it takes you longer and it's kind of frustrating to go down. And so similar, when, when you have a concussion, I could ask you a question and you'd be able to come up with the answer, but because it has to go under that detour, it just takes you longer to be able to think about it. You're like, oh. I know the answer to that, why can't my brain kind of get there? And it's just frustrating. So one thing that I do as a concussion specialist is I try to make sure that you're able to kind of navigate that detour while you're not accidentally driving down the road. If we accidentally drive down that road that's under construction, well, um, we know if we drive down a road that's under construction, we could tear our car up, we can tear that road up, we're gonna disturb the workers who are trying to kind of fix that road. And so we definitely know it's gonna take longer for them to be able to fix that road up, and it's gonna be longer before we're able to drive down it again. So when we have a concussion, we definitely don't wanna be accidentally driving down that road. And at the same time, we wanna make sure that the workers that are working on the road have all the supplies that they need to be able to effectively drive down that road, uh, to be able to fix that road. And so when we have a concussion, we need to make sure that we're not doing those specific things that get the heart rate up, that make us concentrate, the things that kind of would make us accidentally drive down that road. Another thing that I like to talk about as far as analogy with concussion is if we think about our brain as a marathoner. So uh, somebody who's a routine marathoner, they're, they're in great shape. They're able to kind of run through. They don't have to take a break. They do need to make sure that they're supplying themselves with you know, adequate hydration and nutrition to be able to kind of get through the day. And so if we think about our brain, it's normally like a marathoner. It's able to get through that day from beginning to end. At the same time, if we don't eat something, we might get a little bit hangry, those type of kind of things. After a concussion, our brain's uh, metabolic demands go up a lot. So we really need to make sure that um, our brain is getting adequate hydration, adequate nutrition. You don't wanna let it get hangry. You don't wanna let it get dehydrated. You have to really stay on top of those things. At the same time, that marathoner who's normally in good shape, all of a sudden is not in such great shape. And so where maybe we could go through an entire eight day, uh, eight hour day of school, maybe we can only go for 15 minutes before our brain says, hold on a second, I just need to, <sighs> to stop and kind of catch my breath for a second. And so, uh, it's very important when you have a concussion that you give yourself adequate breaks throughout the day. Give your uh, brain a little bit of a break from uh, your studies. Uh, give yourself a little bit of a two minute kind of recharge. Just like if you're running and you run out of breath, you need to kind of stop, walk it off for a little bit, drink a little bit of water. If you've been running for a while, make sure that you're eating a snack to replenish your body and then you get back on that road again. And so these are some of my approaches that I explain to patients when they have a concussion.